A 29 below zero, good morning to everybody. It was interesting in leaving uh, the house this morning, it, uh, it said minus 22 and I thought that's not too bad and then I went down a degree every minute I was driving here. So uh, welcome, welcome to 29 below in the Enjoy Centre in St. Albert. Uh, my name is Guy Boston, I'm the Executive Director of Economic Development and uh, welcome to our business breakfast. Uh, this is our ninth annual business breakfast, so, um, you know, geez, next year is going to be the big one. So if, if you're impressed by this, come back again next year. A uh, couple of things I want to do right off the hop. Um, everybody's been having a little bit of fun with uh, figuring out what that device is on your table. Um, I've seen uh, people take it apart, so good on you. I don't know if you can get it back together again. Um, I, I heard one person think that it was for shaving your legs. There was a little thing that popped up on that, but what it's really for is your iPhone or your Blackberry or whatever handheld device you have. So if you can imagine, uh, crack this thing open as far as you can and almost over bend it so that the white is on the bottom and you can actually stand your iPhone up in there so that for next Olympics you can watch at your desk all the hockey games and sport events. If you fold it back up, and it, I almost feel like a WestJet uh, flight attendant here, if you please you know, fold this back up, you almost have to get your fingernails underneath this black tab here to slide it up. And a little black brush comes up and what that's for, if you'll watch me demonstrate, cleaning the screen of your iPhone. Now you can try shaving your legs with this. Uh, one of the guys in our office tried that and we had to cut the device off of his leg uh, after he tried. So anyway, thank you again for coming and uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to be the MC. And as well, I believe I'm also saying something uh, towards the end of this. Um, if we can get the PowerPoint up, please. And oh yeah, they showed me how to turn this on. Here we go, we're on. And bingo, here we go. All right, so here's what we're going to do this morning. And uh, we do have an action-packed morning for you. Um, breakfast, I think almost everybody did that, but it's still set up over there. So if somebody's just uh, arrived, feel free to uh, grab some breakfast. Uh, we will then have uh, our mayor, uh, Nolan Krause, speak. Our city manager, Patrick Draper, will say some, uh, bring some greetings as well, and, and then I'll uh, present for a bit. And then towards the end, we will have a panel discussion, so that's uh, the uh, kind of a question and answer period. And um, then we'll wrap up, and we should be out of here by 8.30, quarter to 9, if all goes well. I do want to point out that at the back of the room, uh, we have uh, four of our uh, developers in St. Albert that have uh, taken advantage of having uh, space for uh, uh, displaying um, information about their particular companies. And um, I also do want to point out, and uh, right now it's uh, fairly dark out and we can see the screens really well, uh, but if at some point in time it, the sun does come up, and I think it does come up every morning, um, it could get a little difficult to see, um, so you can follow along on your handheld device. So the QR code is on your table. That'll take you right to the site and the PowerPoints will be on there. And as well, you can go right to um, at cultivatebusiness.ca, that's cultivatebusiness, one word, dot ca, um, and it is also there and you can kind of pick your way through our website to find it. Um, just one more thing before I introduce the mayor. I want everybody, and I want you to do it proud, like you know geography like nobody else knows geography. Point north. Show me where north is. Everybody. All right, that's fascinating. All right, keep that in mind. Um, we will, uh, it'll come up and be a little bit more prevalent uh, as the morning goes on. I'd now like to call up our mayor, Nolan Krause. The point north thing, there must be something later on that one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to, uh, uh, first of all, talk a little bit about Economic Development Day, then I'm going to uh, introduce a few folks and then uh, get into some uh, details of a presentation. Uh, historically, uh, uh, the uh, Council has taken this opportunity to make a declaration and we'll do that uh, uh, this time again this year. So. Uh, Economic Development Day. Whereas St. Albert is home to a diverse range of over 3,100 businesses representing the retail, light industrial, home-based, warehousing and technology sectors, and whereas St. Albert is part of a regional trading area exceeding 1 million people, and whereas economic development plays an important role in the growth of our community, and whereas strengthening and enhancing economic development, including community branding, 
in St. Albert, in St. Albert continues to be a priority for City Council. Now therefore, I, Nolan Krauss, on behalf of City Council, do hereby proclaim February 25th as Economic Development Day in St. Albert. So, uh, to Guy Boston, thank you very much for the leadership you're providing and, uh, and uh, display this uh, proudly. Thank you very much. Good to go. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, a couple of folks. First of all, uh, thank you, Stephen Kahn, uh, for continuing to support our community and, uh, and being out this morning. Uh, I believe your colleague, uh, uh, Thomas Lukasik, uh, may be coming. We had heard that he was going to be uh, try to get here, so we'll give that an opportunity. If he, if he comes, we'll give him an opportunity also to, to, uh, to say a few words. I'd like to uh, introduce, some of you may not, uh, may not know our council, uh, many of you are actually from out of town, and I do appreciate those of you who, uh, uh, who are here this morning. And, and in particular, if, you've, if you're visiting St. Albert uh, or vis having come to this breakfast, uh, I would like to have you stand, uh, to have my council stand up, the, those of you who are here this morning. Uh, Councillor Wes Broadhead uh, over here. We have Councillor Jill Prefontaine in the front here, Councillor Kathy Heron here, and Councillor Tim Osborne. Thank you very much. That's, those are the folks that are here this morning. Thank you very much for that. Thank you to the business community and thank you uh, to Patrick Draper. Uh, Patrick is going to uh, uh, be introduced in a, in a few minutes and coming up. And thank you uh, to Guy, to, to you and all the city staff. Quite a few city staff are here this morning and thank you folks for, for coming and thanks to everyone else. I'm going to talk uh, three areas. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on non-residential, on residential, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some council priorities. And my job for a, for a little while is to really set the stage for some of the details that Guy Boston and, and, uh, and Patrick Draper are going, to, are going to be going into, and I'm going to do it in, in that fashion. So first of all, I'd like to talk about non-residential. I've put this, uh, this Gazette uh, headline up. It's from 1961. I've put this up for the last uh, several years since I've been doing this because it continues to reinforce uh, uh, to me, the importance of us to, to not take our eye off the target of, of increasing some non-residential development in our community. This is 1961, and, uh, and it was at the time of St. Albert's 100th anniversary, uh, interestingly enough, and, and it's important as we move forward on, uh, on, on setting the stage for continual development. I'm going to go around the horn very, very quickly. These are the shaded areas of residential and non-residential development that I'm going to talk about in a very, very quick uh, overview with high speed, uh, with high speed intent. Uh, first of all, I want to set the stage for why non-residential development is is important. Uh, we uh, have about 474 hectares of non-residential land. Uh, and we, uh, the council uh, allocated what's called employment lands in 2012, which took us from the 242 to 484. So as you can see, at this rate, we've got a lot of years of non-residential land. But if you do the arithmetic, that's 10 hectares a year, that's 47 years uh, absorption. Uh, our objective, obviously, is not to take the 47 years to really work harder at, at, at uh, improving that uh, rate. Uh, there's another metric that, I, that council uh, and our city staff look at, and that is uh, trying to keep um, the, the dollars uh, at home and also keep the number of uh, St. Albertans who work, uh, working in St. Albert. So this shows that about 25 or 26 percent of working St. Albertans work in St. Albert. So the other 75 percent, so let's just say there's 40,000 people, adults in St. Albert that are working. 10,000 stay in St. Albert to work, 30,000 leave St. Albert to work. So that's a metric that's important as we look ahead because obviously uh, the old adage of live, work and play, you'd like to be able to keep as many people in your community to have a more sustainable community. So while it's maybe nudging up over the years, it's an area that will be continually uh, reported on. Now, going around the horn a little bit, getting in the helicopter, uh, this the area number one is the area which is to the uh, to the to the east side of St. Albert called Campbell Park. For the most part, built out with exception of some areas around the casino, uh, and that that area is uh, um, 
is the first area of non-residential that is yet to be built. This is the very active area in the last, uh, uh, really especially in the last year with the Costco development. Highway commercial corridor, now the, the Walmart uh, development uh, was about uh, 40 acres, it filled out, and now we're gonna see the next 40 acres uh, on the Costco side uh, fill out. So that is gonna continue to nudge forward Fourth, and that is a second area. Again, I'm going to leave some of the details to Guy Boston, but that's a non-residential area, area number two. Area number three is what's called employment lands. We don't have a name of a park for it. It's, uh, it's about uh, 600 acres, and it's north and a little bit west from here. So uh, Kitty Corner across uh, this way, northwest, and so that area is the, the, is the next area, which is, which is um, the prime area into the future. We have the majority of the landowners in that area uh, are currently still uh, either farmers or uh, small, uh, uh, small, have small ownership positions. And the final area that, uh, that I'd like to speak about very briefly is the area where we're around where we're sitting, which is what's called South Riel. So this is going to be a very active area in the next decade uh, and uh, Great West uh, is, an air, is, uh, is a company who has taken a very active role. Again, no details at this point. Uh, I'm going to leave that to Guy Boston. So I would like to just at this point uh, offer some thanks of really what I'll call willing, develop, willing developers, landowners who are very, very uh, supportive of non-residential development right now, Landrex, uh, has provided a tremendous amount of leadership over the, over the last uh, number of years, getting, uh, really getting the Costco lands serviced, selling those Costco lands to Cameron, and then Cameron bringing them on, sir, uh, bringing them on stream. Uh, thank you to Cameron, who have, who have now uh, purchased land in St. Albert and are currently a willing landowner. PJSJ, who for the most part has finished up uh, his developments in St. Albert, but he developed uh, the most of Campbell Park. Uh, in the last number of years. Great West, who is now preparing development around, uh, around this uh, South Riel area, and Melcor, who has purchased property around the Walmart area, uh, they are also a very willing landowner and now being very, uh, very aggressive as they move forward with their plans. So thank you to those developers who have chosen non-residential in our community and to develop. Now I'd like to speak about residential. Uh, and the residential component, you need obviously you need people to purchase goods and services in a community. So the, the blend of residential and non-residential in many ways has to come together. Now, what, what I'm going to say to you is that there is a very good climate right now for residential in St. Albert. And I'm going to I'm going to show you the metrics to kind of set the stage for that. First of all, this is Alberta MLS sales. So the past five years. We're seeing a very, very positive trend of residential sales. This is from the Canadian Real Estate Association. So as you can see, a very good, strong trend up in residential sales in Alberta. Now I'm going to go to the capital region. This is just straight, single, detached housing starts. Again, as you can see, the last five years, you can see an, an increasing trend of housing starts in strictly the capital region. So. Positive increase in, in Alberta, positive increase in the capital region. And this combination is what's setting up St. Albert uh, and, and really the Alberta for a continued growth. So five-year mortgage rate, uh, th this from the Bank of Canada, this is showing obviously a declining mortgage rate at really its all-time low, uh, at low time. What's that starting to do? Well starting to also drive up housing prices. So as you can see in the last five years, the housing prices are continually nudging up. And this is, these are new house prices in the capital region. So a very, very positive economy, very positive for the province, very positive for the region. House prices are rising. Now this is multis. So these are uh, semi-detached, these are row housing, this is apartments, uh, CMHC numbers. Very, very interesting because this is starting to show uh, what we're all being told that the, that the new home buyer uh, is not necessarily interested in 
the single detached house or the, or the, the, the house two car garage where people are prepared to purchase uh, and willing to live in, uh, in, a, in a different type of house perhaps than people of my generation. And this is, this is burying itself out right in front of us. So the multis are increasing in, 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 tumbers, in numbers in the capital region. So those are the number of multis in the capital region. Now, it's also, of course, influenced by vacancy rate. So this is apartment vacancy rate. So there aren't very many uh, vacant apartments uh, for rent or for, uh, uh, for anybody. And so this is, this is the, um, sorry, this is a mirror of what you're starting to see in St. Albert. A lot of apartments, uh, if you look at, uh, the, again, I'm, I use the area around Costco, but also up in Northridge, uh, a lot of areas uh, are seeing uh, good apartment uh, construction, good numbers in St. Albert. So we are a mirror of what's happening in the capital region. Vacancy rate down, therefore people are starting to build units. Now there are realtors in the room that would know a lot more about this statistic than I do, but, but I shared this at the, ca at the chamber lunch a couple weeks ago, and I find it a, a very interesting uh, trend. Uh, this is on New Year's Day, this is the number on New Year's Day, I write it down, I get up on New Year's Day and I write down what the MLS listing is, and it's an interesting trend, but it's showing the number of listings that are, that are declining uh, over a period of time. So the supply and demand in St. Albert, uh, and, and actually if you look at the MLS listings, MLS listings today, uh, you, you would see over, uh, compared to the Februarys of the past, we are generally a low time in terms of MLS listings. So let's talk about what does that mean and what areas are, will, will we see residential development. This is an area called, uh, called Riverside. Uh, there are houses in, uh, going up in Riverside now. Uh, I was by there just yesterday. There were, uh, there were a couple show homes, and it looks, to me, uh, right, it looks to me like there are a couple new homes that are just under construction uh, at, uh, next to the show homes. So just getting started in this particular area, you're gonna, uh, you could probably buy a, a house there um, uh, today because of the, uh, of the availability of lots and the servicing and the roads that are in there. This area number six, uh, I mentioned Melkor. Uh, the, the shaded area that is number six is Melkor has purchased all of that entire property right up to the area around Walmart. Uh, so this uh, is, is an area that is going to be I forget the exact number that Melkor is proposing, but I think it's around 6,000 population, if I remember correctly, in this area, as well as Melkor's position is that they would be also developing non-residential or commercial uh, around Walmart. So a, a non-residential or a residential uh, component, uh, this, this area number seven is Erin Ridge North. Uh, that is the area that uh, Landrex has been developing the last three or four years, uh, building out very, very quickly. and. Uh, uh, again with uh, commercial, right along the commercial corridor, apartments in that area, single family, uh, and, and a new, uh, and a new uh, K to six elementary school as well for the public school system in that area. So very, very positive. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge some of, the, some of the home builders that have done a great job in helping build our community in the last, uh, in the last year or two. Uh, Sarasota uh, has, uh, had slipped to number three in terms of home building uh, last or in 2012, but they they were back to number one last year. So Sarasota, uh, and followed very very closely by uh, Daytona Ironstone. So uh, we have many many builders that in our community. Uh, that uh, C2 Homes is a, is another one has been uh, building quite a bit uh, quite a bit more Maxwood Homes. So thank you to the home builders who continue to be part of that economic development. Uh, uh, machine that we're uh, that we're in the middle of right now in this certainly in this area. Um, in the in the economic development or the, in the the area what I would call more mixed. This is an area that does not have specific details associated with it yet. This is the Avenir and uh, the Avenir and SAS, uh, and this this these plans are expected to continue to be brought forward uh, sometime in 2014. There's some non-residential and some residential development going forward. Now I'd like to just uh, touch a little bit on council priorities as we move into some of the, uh, the future. I'll wrap it up with this and, uh, and then I have uh, uh, 
and then I will pass it on to Guy Boston. Land availability, ability and certainty. Uh, you've heard me talk about this in the number of, over the, over the last uh, number of years. Uh, bringing land certainty to, or bringing certainty to all landowners is very, very important. They need to know what the rules of the game are for the land that they own. And if they don't like the rules of the game, then they would choose to sell, or if they like the rules of the game, they may choose to develop or bring a developer in. Uh, and some of that hasn't been easy, quite frankly, because not all uh, landowners uh, have the same vision for their land as the as, as city council or the planners have for their land. So working with uh, working with landowners and developers over the years is a is a uh, is an important priority. Making sure that we look at uh, front ending now. The, uh, Front ending is, is kind of a little bit of a technical term, but if I use the example of Ray Gibbon Drive, Ray Gibbon Drive, who most of many of you came here on, was not built to serve the population that's there because there's nobody lives there. It's really, it was front ended, means it was built for the purpose of spurring future development and, and future housing and future non residential. Ray Gibbon Drive primarily was built for future development. And the developers over a period of time will be paying back the development of that. That's how, so the city of St. Albert front ended it. We paid for it. The province paid 50%. The city pays 50% and the developers are going to pay back uh, uh, a quarter of that as it gets developed in that area. Uh, another area is we're going to continue to, to invest in our, in our downtown. Uh, the downtown area development, which is the DARP. That's the St. Anne extension. We'll free up some. Uh, we'll free up some property downtown. We have uh, a regional uh, project with Bonacord and Edmonton on working on an export alliance. Another one of council's priorities. Number E is to shop local where we where we're permitted. And I say that from a corporate point of view. Uh, the corporation of the the, the the city of St. Albert Corporation cannot always buy buy local. Uh, there are certain laws that dictate when you, when you have to go to low bidder, all those kinds of things. But I think as what council is saying with this message is, wherever council can help and wherever the corporation can help, we're going to encourage and take positions where we need to be shopping local. Further develop an incubation strategy. Some people here from NABI, what we want to do is work with NABI. What is the next phase of business incubation in our community? We believe we should, we should nurture whatever that is and move it forward. Uh, Guy Boston will talk a little bit more, I think, about the, some of the demand studies that, we're, that Council has given uh, the thumbs up to. Work collaboratively with Sturgeon County. Now here's a good example. I'd like to, uh, to introduce at this point uh, Mayor Tom Flynn. If you don't know uh, Tom, uh, please stand up Tom uh, and thank you for being here. Uh, Tom, Tom is uh, the Mayor of Sturgeon County and Tom has made a commitment uh, to work and, and with his entire Council has made a commitment to work together uh, with, uh, with the City of St. Albert uh, Council on various issues. As a matter of fact, uh, all 14 of us uh, together with some of our senior leadership are all going to Westlock for a planning session all day tomorrow and one of the topics is economic development and joint thinking when it comes to economic development. Tom, thank you for being here and thank you for continuing to, to support us. <laughs> Uh, under, uh, also under the, uh, the council uh, priorities are, would be capital region board matters. Uh, Spruce Grove as an example has put forward a motion uh, that has not been voted on at the capital region board to have an economic development committee and to see if we can move forward a, a regional matter. Last night uh, uh, their, uh, council approved an initiative called Concerto which is a francophone uh, economic development component. We haven't gotten into it very much in any detail obviously because last night was really the, the first night. So there are opportunities within the francophone world to bring economic development. Uh, we also have made a statement that we would like to look at service place. Now this isn't necessarily economic development but tourism development. How can we bring dollars in from the outside into our community? What other events can we host at service place which brings more people into the, uh, put more bums in the seats there. Uh, timely review of developer, ap developer applications. Uh, you know, people don't like the word red tape, green tape, uh, you know, friendly, uh, business friendly, but anything that we can do to make sure applications uh, are, are get their fair shake uh, in a timely basis, uh, we, we expect our staff to deal with. Uh, and again, supporting the, the smart city concept, a subset of the botanical arts branding, as well as, as I've already talked about, making sure we support housing options and diversity. 
housing options and diversity are very, very important if you're going to attract uh, young families, young workers, or have the ability to have all kinds of, uh, of uh, socioeconomic uh, um, uh, support in, if, for residents. So ladies and gentlemen, that's a quick uh, round the horn 15, uh, 15 minute review of, to, of, of, of where we are and, uh, and we'll come back uh, to the stage in a few minutes. But thank you for being here and, uh, and uh, over to, uh, I believe it's now over to Patrick Draper. You're taking it on for next guy? Okay, I will. thank you folks. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I'd now like to introduce our um, city manager, uh, Patrick Draper. Uh, Pat is coming up on two years here in St. Albert, and uh, there's been a lot of changes under uh, Patrick's leadership. So uh, over to you, Patrick. Uh, good morning. Thanks, Guy, and uh, thank you, Mayor, for that uh, opening uh, presentation. Um, I hope you really got a sense that there's a lot happening. At the City of St. Albert, uh, certainly we're trying to build the community. Council is supporting initiatives to build the community and, and move forward. And what that means is there's a lot of opportunities for businesses uh, to expand and, and grow along with the, uh, with the city. Uh, I was noticing during the mayor's presentation that there's a couple of very heavy tweeters uh, in the audience. And I didn't quite get the joke about the ketchup, but I don't know, <laughs> maybe they can uh, help us with that afterwards. Uh, but you can join the conversation. I would like to thank the economic development team. The materials on your table are uh, fabulous. The program, some background information. Uh, there's uh, the uh, Twitter uh, accounts if you want to join that. Uh, this morning what I want to do is take a few minutes and uh, uh, if I can get the clicker to work, uh, and share with you uh, two things. A smart city initiative, and then I'll talk briefly about our capital partnership program. Some of you may have heard of Smart City. I did talk about it last uh, year at this uh, business breakfast. Well, what is a smart city? A smart city really is an urban place that embraces innovation, technology, and data analytics. So a lot of, lot of big words. What does that really mean? It's a new way of looking at how cities operate, how businesses operate within the city context, and how residents interact with the city, receive their services, find out information about what's happening in the city, it allows us as a city to actually understand our assets, what the condition is, uh, how they're operating, uh, and allows us to do it in a much more uh, cost-efficient manner. So we really see Smart City as having advantages not only for the city itself, but also for our residents and uh, definitely some opportunities uh, for business. And one of the things that it really does is it promotes uh, economic diversification and new jobs. Uh, smart cities, there is technology that is actually sold at the end of the day, so there is a real business opportunity. And what we're seeing as we move forward uh, in developing our plans in this area is that it's helping us attract interest uh, from companies outside of the capital region uh, to want to do business here in, in St. Albert. And it, we're also finding that it's opening up some opportunities for businesses that are already here to grow their, uh, their revenues. So where are we right now? There's about 100 plus cities in the world that have embraced uh, smart city concepts. And St. Albert, like most of these cities, have engaged in a handful of, of activities. And I'd like to share with you uh, some samples. So we have real-time transit notifications. So you can get uh, the next app uh, for uh, St. Albert Transit. You can get it on your iPhone. And it'll tell you basically when the bus is going to be arriving. So if you're standing outside and it's minus 25 degrees, uh, you know you've got five minutes to freeze uh, before the bus actually gets there. Moisture sensors in sports fields. Uh, wouldn't we like that at home, where you could have a little sensor in your lawn that'll tell you when to water and when not to water? Uh, well, you do it on a very large scale. Um, there's very large fields, there's a lot of water. It makes some sense to be able to understand uh, when you should be watering and not wasting uh, water. Remote vehicle tracking and fleet management. This is where I have to disclose what we're really doing. So it might sound like we put little sensors and GPS tracking on our buses and our trucks, keep, keep track of where they, where they are. That would be very logical. Well, actually what we did is we put a special sensor and GPS on each council member's car. We want to keep track of where our members of council are going. So this way we have, in our boardroom, we have a very large screen TV and we have all of their cars tracked and so we can follow council as they're going all around the city and we know exactly where they are. I'm kidding. Crime mapping is, a, is an example that we've used uh, where we take data and when you uh, 
in a smart city concept, you try to use data in a very intelligent way. So crime mapping allows us to take the data of where crime actually occurred, uh, put it into a program that produces maps, and you can start to see clusters of what types of crime is occurring in what parts of the city. Helps our police services uh, do a better job. Centralized monitoring and controls in our core facilities. The, we have over 50 buildings, if you can believe it, in the city. Uh, so heating and cooling, uh, security. Uh, so when you have centralized controls, it allows you to manage your buildings a little smarter. And we've uh, introduced an electric vehicle charger station at the uh, business center. Uh, so any of you that have an electric car that need to plug in, get a little bit of power, we have a charging station. So there's some really neat things but they're like, kind of like one here, one there. You know, why are we doing this? What is, the, what is the overall reason? And we think there's an opportunity to look at this in a much more holistic way uh, and to um, manage it and look at the city in a, in a whole context. So what are some of the opportunities? Well, a smart city has really fast broadband connectivity. And what we found in the city of St. Albert is that our uh, amount of fiber that is available for businesses is really not where it should be. Economic Development did a survey of businesses in both the Riel and Kemble uh, business parks. Uh, dissatisfaction levels were pretty high. Uh, we actually convened a, a little symposium with businesses last week. We brought in four uh, broadband uh, suppliers. And lo and behold, individual companies are having trouble getting the providers to give them access to fiber, uh, high-speed fiber, on a, a very cost-effective basis. So we're going to play marriage broker a little bit. We're going to ask businesses to come together who want uh, high-speed internet to form a little bit of a purchasing co-op, and we're going to get the vendors to come forward and bid on that business. And so we asked the vendors, if we could bring 10, 20, 30, 40 businesses together in each one of these parks and say, hey, we want better service, would you bid on that? And they were all there. They just they would absolutely love this. So the city will play a little bit of a matchmaker role because if you can have high-speed internet, it enables all kinds of new business opportunities for you to do business not only in the region but around the world. A smart city also provides opportunities for us to do partnerships uh, with academic institutions, uh, both at the college and university level, uh, and with industry, and I'll share in, in a little bit. Uh, we're trying to form uh, such an alliance uh, across all those sectors. It will allow us to uh, have real-time asset management and controls uh, so that uh, what's happening with our pipes under, underground, what's happening with our vehicles, uh, it really is a, a very intelligent way to go forward. New civic applications and, and crowdsourcing. So in crowdsourcing, uh, one of the things we're looking at is how do we gain resident input? So when uh, we have a matter that is before council, it's important for residents to be able to engage. And so we may be able to accommodate 20, 30, 40 people in council chambers. If we do a survey, we may be able to get 100 people or 300 people maybe participate in that survey. But how do we get more people uh, engaged in contributing to their, their views to where the city is going? That is one of those opportunities. Centralized response and coordination. Uh, one city that has done uh, phenomenal on this is Chicago with their 311 service. Um, so instead of having a customer service center here and a, a phone over here and internet over here and an email over here, it all becomes integrated into one platform so that we can respond to your need the way you want. If you want to call, it's simple. You call. You want to email. Uh, right now, it's a bit fragmented, and I think there's an opportunity to have a much more centralized system. Enhanced data analytics. Uh, once you start getting into this and you get more information, you analyze data and you start to understand uh, when, when equipment, for example, would need to be repaired. And another interesting opportunity, uh, this really touches on the economic development side, is testing of new technologies. So one of the things we're looking at is, um, if you presume most of you have a home, and in your home is a water meter reader. You pay a water bill. Uh, well, the old-fashioned system is somebody used to come along and write down the numbers, or in some communities, you know, you'd fill in a card and you, and you write your number in. Well, there's an opportunity to look at wireless meter reading technology. Now, if we only have four people who read meters, that's not a big labor savings. Um, and the current technology providers is about $250 per household. So a little box, $250. I find that kind of expensive. You can buy wireless router at retail for $150. So paying $250 to put a wireless box in someone's house sounds like a lot to me. We have 22,000 households. It makes for a $5 million project. That's a lot of money. So we've started a conversation around 
incubating a new technology. Why couldn't this thing be $25 or $50 or even $100 a box, where we'd save a lot of money uh, and that would save our taxpayers a lot of money. So we started discussions with some industry partners. We started some discussions with Nate around who would like to invent something new. Uh, and we as the city could potentially look at pilot testing that. And if it works and we go forward, we've done a couple of things. We've saved the city millions of dollars and we've incubated a new company that could take that experience and produce a product and start to sell it not only here, but all around the world. So those are the, uh, some examples of some of the exciting uh, opportunities that we see going forward. Where are we right now? Uh, we are preparing a smart city master plan. A master plan is something that cities do. And a master plan is designed to kind of be the whole view. So what in a future state, could be 20 years, 25 years, what would the whole city actually look like uh, if it was uh, moving down this path? And a smart city master plan uh, really fits and supports the city's botanical arts brand. And if you've seen, uh, our marketing theme is cultivate life. And there's a huge portion of being a smart city that will help our residents lead a more fulfilling life. So the plan uh, objectives, we're going to uh, identify technology investments that improve the management uh, of the city. We're going to support growth of existing businesses, attract new investment. Um, one conversation on the existing business I had with the proprietor of a swimwear store, uh, she was asking, well, you know, how would this affect me? I have one retail store. Well, if you had high-speed broadband connectivity, that one store from the store could start to put on a website and uh, the products and start to sell those products around the world. If there was a very interesting opportunity beyond that, uh, that store could actually move out of a retail environment, go into one of our industrial areas, have a warehouse, develop an online business, and take on Amazon. And you could actually do that with high-speed internet connectivity in, in this world today. And you could do that right from St. Albert. So we want to support existing businesses and we want to attract new investment. And we also want to uh, provide opportunities for improved organizational efficiencies. Uh, managing government is, is a challenge. Uh, you know, in business, uh, you look at your costs and each year you have to adjust your, your selling prices of your products or your services. And you have to go to your customer and you have to say, gee, uh, you know, my cost had kind of gone up. I got to raise my price by 2% this year or 3% or, or 5%. Um, well, in the city context, uh, our council has to review a budget each year and there's a property tax increase p potentially at the end of the day. And how are residents going to react to a property tax increase? I don't know many residents that like to see any property tax increase. Uh, we always hear, you know, oh, it's too big, it's too big. Uh, so one of the things that we have to do as a city is we have to become more efficient uh, inside the organization about how we have cost and how we incur cost, and that's labor, um, and, and a lot of the uh, services that we deliver. So we need to become more efficient in that way. So where we are right now in the master plan, it's a three-year process. Uh, we have completed our planning. Uh, we have council approval now to uh, set up the steering committee, uh, which will have some members of the community uh, on it, and we'll continue to do research. And what we're targeting for is uh, the latter part of next year to actually have that plan um, finalized. Um, but while we're doing uh, this work and while we have done uh, the research, one of the things that we have discovered is that there is a lot of interest in what we're doing. So we had conversations with some major uh, corporations, um, academic institutions, and they were very s impressed with what St. Albert was doing. We are, we discovered, the first community in the world in this smart city initiative that is actually putting a master plan for the whole city together. Like St. Albert, a lot of other cities had done one-off projects. And some of them won awards. You can actually win an award. Even you could do, we could probably, for our transit app, we could probably win an award and say we're a smart city. But it's just one thing. So we've attracted attention from some really, really large global corporations. And that conversation has uh, come along where we are proposing a smart city alliance. And this is something that is going to go before our city council on March 3rd. And the concept behind this is that a municipality, St. Albert, IBM Canada, Cisco Canada, both major global corporations that are heavily involved in smart city technologies, Nate and the University of Alberta would come together and form an alliance. The alliance would be formed to help promote the concepts of what is smart city, to help bring people together to allow networking, sharing of information, 
so that individuals that might have an idea can maybe connect with a researcher or connect with a, another company. So startup entrepreneurs uh, would want to get connected with this. Corporations that might want to reinvent their business model might want to get involved with this. And we're going to open it up to other um, cities and, and towns throughout the, the province of Alberta. It'll be a knowledge network, uh, and it'll really be a, a place where you can meet and connect. Um, and what we're seeing already in some of the initial discussions and meetings, that people are really excited, they have ideas, and they haven't really figured out how to move that idea forward. Well, we ha have this kind of networking alliance that provides a place that you can connect and, and move things forward. Um, and as I said, we'll be bringing that to City Council uh, very uh, shortly for their uh, review. Um, so from a, a business standpoint, uh, you know, this is a business breakfast, and many of you are business people, and you might be saying, okay, that's really nice for the city. Um, what is it going to do for me? Well, there's a variety of, uh, of areas that I think represent opportunities, you know, for you. Uh, so it may involve looking at your business and saying, well, if I had, you know, really, if I had high-speed fiber coming in, does it change my business model? Does it change the geography that I would actually do business in? Maybe I'm in retail and I thought one day that I'd be a multi-retail store chain. Well, maybe there's another way to look at it. Maybe you don't need more than one location. Maybe you can actually market yourself on the internet around the world without having to open multiple retail stores. Maybe you have multiple locations already. I talked to one company that has branch offices throughout Western Canada and into the United States. And for their service delivery, communication and data flow is really important and they need this high-speed connectivity to be able to operate their business uh, effectively. With St. Albert moving into the smart city uh, concept will be a bit of a living lab. So there may be a company that says, you know, I think I have uh, this application um, around mapping, GIS mapping, and I, you know, would the city partner with me and help me test this a little bit and see if it's a viable concept? So we'll help our business do a bit of a proof of concept, maybe it grows, turns into a new revenue opportunity, um, for that uh, company. Um, so we do see that there's a connection with the business community um, and uh, as the Smart City Alliance, we get that going, it'll be an opportunity for you to connect uh, and see where some of those opportunities might be for you. Um, I'd like to quickly talk uh, about, that'll close the Smart City discussion, I want to quickly talk about a capital partnership program, uh, a bit of a different topic, uh, but uh, I'll just highlight it quickly uh, and give you a sense of uh, why we're, we're doing this. It's a part of our uh, community building activity that Council has uh, approved. So the Capital Partnership Program is really designed to encourage growth in community facilities. Uh, you, in the Mayor's uh, address this morning, I think he gave you a good sense that we're about to experience a lot of growth. Our population is forecasted to go from 61,000 to about 115,000 and the forecast that is, is there through this uh, Capital Region Board would have this take about 20-25 years. Well what we're seeing right now and what the Mayor shared with you is that's likely to happen in a much shorter time period not going to be 20, 25 years. I don't know if it's going to be 10 or 15, but it's going to be upon us a, a lot quicker than we originally thought. So with that, there is a need to grow community facilities. So we're going to need more hockey rinks, we're going to need more soccer fields, we need more meeting spaces and gathering spaces, um, the library might, it would need to expand. So if our population is about doubling, does that mean we need to double every single facility? Probably not, um, because there will be <coughs> utilization. Um, but we do have uh, 26 schools uh, in the city of St. Albert, uh, two new ones were approved by the, by the province, so this is my plug to our uh, MLA. Does that mean we need 26 more schools uh, in St. Albert if we're going to double in population? Um, raises an interesting question, right, uh, if we're going to have that many people move in. Uh, where are the schools going to come from? Where are they going to go? Um, so the Capital Partnership Program is designed to leverage strategic partnerships and funding. The city would not be in a position financially to be able to pay 100% of the cost of every single facility that we might need going forward. So we set up this partnership program so that the city can, can play a role and partner with uh, people in the community, organizations in the community, to help build some of these facilities. And the program would see the city contribute one-third of the capital cost up to $5 million. So the project, if it's $15 million, capital project, we would contribute one-third uh, up to five million. If it was a, a 1.5 million, we would contribute half a million. It's a competitive application process, final project approval by city council. Facilities could include recreation, culture, tourism, tourism attractors, research centers, or, or gathering places, so a variety of different applications. 
And eligible applicants would include nonprofits and, and academic uh, institutions. So this is not a for-profit model, and I know a lot of you are in the business community and you're used to making a profit. The application here for you may be if you're interested in community building and you have a personal passion around uh, the city should really have a youth center and you want to lead a project and move forward on bringing a youth center into the city of St. Albert as a community building activity that your business is, is supporting, uh, that might be an example of how you can get involved. Uh, and so probably it'll be 2015 when we'll start to see some of these applications. So very quick uh, overview uh, of the Capital Partnership Program and that concludes uh, my remarks. So thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Patrick. And as you can see, we're doing a lot of unique things here in the city of St. Albert under uh, Patrick's leadership. So it's certainly taken us in directions that are uh, very exciting for us. Um, yeah, we've been kind of racing the clock here and racing the sun. So as you can imagine, being in this beautiful facility here, it's a greenhouse, uh, we're gonna have a challenge with that. So uh, um, as I indicated, you can follow along on your device of the presentation because there's a couple of cool things I did want to show um, that are gonna be tough if I take too long. So right off the hop, I noticed somebody tweeted you needed a university degree to operate those uh, devices. You'll notice the PNG behind my title there. <laughs> you may have wondered, um, and you know, I do want to point out to you the, the graphic. You know, so we have a great graphics uh, staff in the city of St. Albert, and uh, I do want to throw a great big thank you out to uh, Florence Ma and Stephanie Faulkner and Lawrence Lai. Um, they have created um, everything that you see here, so um, let's give them a big uh, cheer for that. A lot of work to do this. So, so the graphic that you've seen um, actually has a little bit of a history behind it, so, uh, or history, it's got a reason behind it, I should say. So um, if you highlight all the key activity areas in St. Albert and connect all the dots, that's what that molecule is. So it's very cool. So um, I just thought I'd, I'd point that out right off the hop. Um, I'd also like to point out a fact that uh, over the course of uh, 2013 we created an Economic uh, Development Advisory Board and in fact we have 12 members on the board and, and we have our chair Randy Duguay and our vice uh, chair Janelle Hackett here. If you wouldn't mind standing and, and uh, kind of waving to the crowd. And uh, here are the names of the folks that are on our board and they're members of the community. So if you wouldn't mind standing as well, uh, folks that are here from the board just so uh, people in the crowd can recognize you. and. Uh, if you do want to hook up with uh, folks that are on our board, uh, please see them. And uh, you'll see in the packet uh, the number of folks that we have in economic development uh, to serve uh, the business uh, community here in St. Albert. I do want to introduce uh, Sean McRitchie. He's our new business uh, attraction manager. Sean, if you wouldn't mind just standing up and waving. There's Sean over there. He got a new haircut. Love the haircut, Sean. All right. Um, then now next, so that's kind of the theme and that is the theme uh, that I'm gonna go through. So I'm basically gonna show you stuff that I showed you last year and then show you how it's already changed and then we'll talk about next. So last year I showed you how we were being recognized uh, by third party endorsers um, of, of where we ranked as a city. So look at that, 157, 157. That's pretty good when you think nationally. Last year, one, two, three, five. So I mean, we are certainly on, on a lot of folks' radars. Um, you know, this is really, you know, it's really good for us, you know, so we don't have to toot our own horn. We have people doing it for us, uh, but we certainly uh, jump on top of that as well. Uh, the St. Albert Gazette did a great two-page spread on what we accomplished in 2013, so if you didn't see that in the paper, I think that was in January or so, wasn't it Viola? I can't remember when it was, but um, it, she nailed it. They nailed it. The Gazette nailed it as far as uh, how, uh, how much work we'd undertaken in, uh, in 2013. Um, we touched base with a lot of people. And, um, you know, this slide here is just popping up and, and showing some of the folks. So oh, there's catch up by the case. They showed up there. Um, you know, over the course of the year, you might recognize some of these brands. Others you may not. Um, but there is one brand that is going to pop up right at the very end, and it's going to be a little hard to see. Uh, but we've attracted an out-of-province investor into, uh, into St. Albert. Uh, Cape Construction, um, they're an out-of-province uh, investor, and you're going to hear a lot more about them over the coming months, and, and they're looking forward to a long and mutually beneficial relationship here in St. Albert. So, Risa and, and Zach, if you wouldn't mind just standing up and just giving a little wave. So, uh, they're from uh, British Columbia, so very glad to have them here. All right, I talked about North. All right, I want you to clap as to whether or not you think I'm pointing north or not. 
Oh, thank God. Excellent. That's north. Okay, let's remember that, okay? So um, the, men, the mayor mentioned um, a helicopter view. We actually have helicopter views. So I'm gonna show you what it looked like in 2012, and then I'm gonna show you what it looked like in 2013 for a number of areas in St. Albert. Um, watch for the rotating north arrow, because we're gonna make you dizzy. North will not always be to the top. So the, in the bottom right corner, you're gonna see a north arrow, so that'll help orientate you as we move through. So. Campbell North. So I'm going to go through a couple of areas first. So right off the hop, you can see this is Campbell North, and there's the North Arrow. See it there? It's pointing to your right. Um, and uh, as you can see in 2012, um, the extreme end of Campbell North was kind of empty. Um, this is what it looked like last fall. So again, there's the North Arrow pointing in the same direction. We're coming at it from a bit of a different direction. Uh, but you'll notice that there's uh, considerably more development that's occurred uh, in the, uh, the Campbell North area. And in fact, um, we're running a lot that are available in uh, Campbell North. So you're going to see that uh, develop over uh, the short period of time. Now let's talk a little bit about Campbell South. So here again is the, uh, the helicopter view of uh, the South Campbell Lands. That's Anthony Hende Drive. Uh, the North Arrow is into this instance at the top. So we're, we're looking north. And again, you can see that whole Campbell South area and you recognize the casino that's sitting there. Um, I don't have a helicopter view of now because it hasn't changed too much. But what I do want to point out uh, that you might not notice the difference here, there's a pile of dirt and the trees are gone. Uh, but I think the other thing that's occurred, if, you know, and if we were to fly the helicopter there today, you'd see a building going up. And that's actually uh, Hermanos Holdings have started their development at number one cars well. Uh, they're going to build their first 8,000 square foot building. And um, you know, if you're interested in leasing some space, they're very much interested in, uh, in uh, talking to you. Um, we talk about catch-up by the case. There may be an opportunity in this area for other stuff by the case or by the pallet, but more news on that later. Um, all right, growth. So those areas are already developed. Those are our business parts, and now we're going to talk about the growth that's occurring um, over these particular areas. So now we're going to dive into uh, South Riel. And um, we have a little bit of fun with this, if we can get this to work. So again, we're going to do a little helicopter view of South Riel. There's the North Arrow. There's the odd time it points down, so we are actually looking south. That's Ray Gibbon Drive, this is the Enjoy Center, so we're looking down onto here, and there is uh, Riel South uh, highlighted. And, uh, and here's what it looks like now, and, and just for fun, we took it from the other direction. Um, but again, I mean, there's Anthony Hende Drive, Ray Gibbon Drive, so anybody that's interested in developing in uh, South Riel uh, can certainly see the advantages of having uh, this type of exposure um, with both the National Highway and uh, Ray Gibbon Drive, future Highway 2, uh, right up against our border. So here's the area structure plan um, for South Riel. And uh, in fact, to the top of that diagram is uh, where we are on the left-hand side of it and immediately across uh, from us and to the east, which is that way, right across uh, Riel Drive, um, is going to be developed by Icon Communities, which is part of Averton Homes. And uh, they're going to be developing 700 units uh, in there, residential units uh, within uh, South Riel. Um, Everton Homes is one of the newest businesses to relocate here in St. Albert. And uh, they've actually moved to the office level of the Enjoy Center over here. And they're happy to proclaim that being uh, in this part of St. Albert uh, gives them the best possible access to the entire region. So uh, um, Everton Homes, welcome to St. Albert as a business. Uh, appreciate that. Um, GWL, so the big plot of land that's immediately south of Leclerc Way, and I'm sorry I've got this one turned sideways, but actually GWL did this to me by making it that way. Um, they've actually been in the public with the plans for their 150 some odd acres of, uh, of property. Um, this was at an open house a week or two ago at the St. Albert Inn, so uh, they will be coming to council with what their plans are. Um, and as you can see, it's, uh, it's quite extensive. So uh, um, we uh, certainly welcome uh, GWL to our community. Uh, now let's go uh, north a little bit, and, and here is the uh, Jensen Lakes. This is a Melcor development, and um, this is kind of cool. Again, there's the North Arrow, so north happens to be the top, so you can see that's uh, Deer Ridge um, immediately to the south, and you can see the uh, bit of a, a wetland there and Farmer's Field, and you know, there's Jensen Lakes, and that's what it looked like uh, last, uh, before last year. So then last year, here's what it looks like now. I love that they put in a North Arrow. See that? They carved in a north arrow for us, so um, look at that point. Perfect, it matches up right there. That's excellent. So as you can see, dirt has already started to move uh, on the uh, Jensen Lakes, and, and we're, uh, we're very pleased about that. Um, 
this is the area structure plan for uh, the development and in fact they're going to be in front of uh, City Council pretty quickly for, uh, for that uh, ASP and uh, will be in the ground this year. Let's now talk about uh, land direct development, Erin Ridge North. Uh, so here's Erin Ridge North. So in 2012, this is kind of what it looked like. Um, again, pay attention to the north arrow. So we are looking south. There's St. Albert uh, Trail, the highway, and there's a spot where Catch Up by the Case had not yet shown up. Um, here's what it looked like last fall. Uh, of course, we're looking in the other direction now, but there is the uh, Costco and uh, some development that's occurred um, kind of to the left of your screen right now, center. Um, so you can certainly see everything that's uh, occurred in uh, Erin Ridge North. Um, so next things coming with that, uh, including an area structure plan uh, amendment and continuing to uh, develop um, along the corridor as well as um, additional residential uh, developments as well. So um, booming up in that direction. All right, now let's head down towards uh, the southwest uh, corner of St. Albert and uh, that was Riverside. So back in 2012, um, here is what that piece of property looked. Again, pay attention to the North Arrow. And um, it's all farmers field, not a lot going on at that point in time. Um, there is way out there, so sorry about that. Uh, we weren't focusing uh, specifically on it in 2012. Uh, this year, um, we have a shot, and you can see it there in the background, uh, just over top of the now Riverside. In fact, uh, as the mayor pointed out, uh, there are some show homes there now and um, some stormwater um, facilities, etc. So uh, that is uh, up and running and, and about to get going. So there is uh, the Riverside development and it's uh, Genstar and Reed Worldwide that are uh, the developers of that. And uh, I believe Genstar has a table at the back if you want more information on that. Ray Gibbon Drive, stage three, uh, important to us. And again, here is a, a shot and it's in the background. You can hardly see it, but it's up against the uh, uh, our development and it was not built in uh, 2012. Um, however now, and this is a much better shot, it's in the foreground, uh, there it is uh, right through the middle of your slide is uh, Ray Gibbon Drive uh, 3. Uh, when we did open this in, uh, in November, uh, I remember thinking to myself as we took the barricade off of uh, Ray Gibbon Drive to open it that we were removing the last barrier to development occurring in West St. Albert. So as the mayor said, it's been a significant investment of council uh, in, in putting that type of infrastructure in place uh, to encourage development to the west. Um, I'll flip through some area structure plans uh, quickly here of uh, developments that will be coming forward. So Elysian Fields and uh, Ramparts Avenue, uh, that is to the immediate west of uh, Ray Gibbon Drive that I just showed you. So as you can see, there's um, um, ambitious plans that are uh, going to be coming to, uh, to Council over the next uh, few months. Um, immediately to uh, the north of uh, Villeneuve and to the west of Ray Gibbon Drive, uh, if you can picture where that is. Uh, uh, actually, between Ray Gibbon Drive and where the Melcor development is, Strata Developments will also be coming with an area structure plan. Um, it looks like that. And uh, actually under construction in our city is Botanica. So this is at the corner of uh, Boudreaux and Belrose. So you may have seen uh, the structures going up there. And uh, so that's a, a nice infill uh, product. And uh, now, and almost complete, is the 525 St. Albert Trail uh, development where uh, Visions and Good Life Fitness are in, uh, and uh, that will be opening very soon, for sure this year. Downtown. I um, want to say a little bit about downtown. It's been mentioned by the mayor that uh, our downtown area redevelopment plan uh, is, is very ambitious, and in fact, the first step of it has been supported by council recently with the approval of uh, examining the realignment of St. Anne Street. Um, this drawing shows what the, uh, the realignment would look like. So if you can imagine uh, going by in front of City Hall to your right-hand side as you drive by City Hall and then you get past the Law Courts building. Um, immediately uh, after Law Courts building, St. Anne will take a turn in between the Grandin Medical Clinic and the trees and head towards Tache Street and ultimately it will, it will go through the uh, Lions Park and back out to uh, Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, the first phase of this will be the, um, the engineering, if you will, or you know, determining where the right-of-way will go for uh, St. Anne Street. And uh, there's an opportunity for the city to create a couple of additional city-owned lots uh, that I hear again and again uh, from uh, potential investors in St. Albert that uh, they want to know whether the city has, the city has uh, lots in downtown uh, that the city owns. So this will actually create uh, three or four or five parcels for us downtown where we can actually uh, market this. 
Uh, we have a number of um, uh, initiatives in downtown and uh, we are uh, working hard to create angle parking on Perron Street this year as a pilot. So that will increase the amount of parking that's downtown uh, and it will certainly make uh, Perron Street uh, a more pedestrian friendly road. Uh, you do need to know that uh, when that happens it will only be one lane in each direction. So right now Perron Street is two lanes in each direction so there's a potential um, if we get this angle parking up and running that uh, it will um, impact traffic but certainly we've heard all the businesses say it's important from the parking perspective and to make it more pedestrian friendly so uh, those are initiatives that uh, we are uh, moving on. Uh, as well downtown um, this is uh, Amicon uh, has purchased the, uh, the Grandin Mall and uh, we are anticipating that there should be some action on uh, that site this year and, and uh, hopefully that does come uh, to fruition. Uh, okay, hopefully the battery isn't dying in here. A couple of quick slides. Uh, the mayor talked about the pace of development. So um, commercial development, our historical has been at about 77,000 square feet per year. Um, you know, we know, uh, based on what we see coming at us, it's going to be at about 150,000 square feet per year. So that's twice the pace. Uh, industrial, again, our historical have been about 53,000 square feet per year, uh, based on the developments that uh, we know are coming towards St. Albert. 200,000 square feet per year. So big ramp ups in uh, both commercial and industrial developments. Our employment lands. So these are the lands that are to the west of Ray Gibbon Drive and north of Meadowview, uh, up to Vilnuf, uh, or uh, not quite up to Vilnuf, but up to the railroad track, let's say, uh, at 617 acres. So we are moving forward on our visioning plans uh, for those lands, and in fact, we're well uh, aware of uh, interests in uh, lands being assembled on in that area, so it is certainly catching the attention of investors and uh, landowners are uh, are interested in selling. So what's happening next? So here are all the areas in St. Albert that I've just spoken to, and as you can see, there's actually a smaller list of things that we could talk about of what has not yet been committed. So these are all the areas. So we've got a lot going on and a lot that's going to happen. So you might ask, so what? Right, so what? What does that really mean to you? Well, I'll tell you what it means. It's a huge opportunity for existing businesses to expand. Um, population, as has been indicated, is going to grow from 60,000 to over 100,000 in a number of uh, years. So, I mean, that's a huge opportunity for our existing business to expand. Um, there's new markets, and there'll be new areas that we can grow into. You've seen there's more commercial development. Uh, so that you can actually double up on your business sites or, uh, or expand into new ones. Um, as we grow, I think there should be more services provided to St. Albert's here in, to St. Albertans here in uh, St. Albert in support of the growing uh, city. So, you know, there's another opportunity. Um, I think there's great employment opportunities uh, that will occur with this growing uh, city. So as the mayor pointed out, 25% uh, of the working population is, is remaining here we're going to see that number grow considerably as we increase the number of businesses, uh, new services, and continue to attract, and as you saw, the, the rapid pace of uh, commercial and industrial development, and, and we know of uh, employers that uh, will quickly be coming uh, to St. Albert that are going to be hiring folks uh, in the hundreds, so uh, we're very excited about that. And then certainly um, our housing is starting to turn uh, for more of a labor market support focus, and uh, the mayor uh, did show um, a... Uh, a slide and in fact I I want to show it and it's actually in the little booklets that I've got on your table too as well uh, where you can see in this slide here and hopefully the Sun hasn't obliterated too much yet um, something spectacular happened in 2013 and that is the amount of multi-family um, residents that have popped up in St. Albert if you add up all the purple which is the top part of every one of those bars um, it does not add up to what happened in one year last year so, you know, that, that opens up an entire new market for businesses to consider uh, the fact that we will have a, a housing choice here now in, in, the, in that area, and, I, and we've seen more plans coming forward um, that will certainly support the labor market that uh, all of the new businesses and, and the expansion of your business uh, can draw from here of people actually that live in St. Albert. So what else do we have available for you? Well, as the mayor indicated, we have uh, a number of uh, studies that have been done that council has, uh, has provided uh, funds for us. So we have an industrial demand study that was done, and that was, uh, it's actually two or three years old, but it's still very relevant. And in fact, it formed the basis of what caused us to create the 617 acres uh, of our employment land. So that's certainly available for anybody that would like to uh, take a look at that. Uh, we just recently uh, 
completed retail demand. Uh, and I'll show a couple slides on that. So that's certainly available for any investors that are interested in, in uh, creating or coming into our space or for uh, businesses that are here and want to see what the future holds for them with the growth in St. Albert um, by way of an uh, expansion opportunity. Uh, we just recently completed, and actually we have the first draft of a hotel demand study, and we hope to be having uh, that finished off in the next uh, two or three weeks so that that can enter into uh, our tool set as well for those that are interested in, in uh, making that uh, investment. And in fact, I can give you a heads up on that, that this demand study did say that, uh, uh, that St. Albert and area can support uh, more hotels in, in St. Albert, so that's very good to us. Uh, we are planning on undertaking an entertainment uh, demand uh, study, so uh, uh, that will focus on that industry, um, as well as an office demand. So we have a number of uh, tool sets that uh, we are going to be uh, uh, bringing forward. Um, in the next week or so, uh, this report will be done, and it's a labor force analysis, uh, where we've actually done uh, an analysis of selected neighboring communities and compared labor forces uh, that are resident in those communities against our community. So I think that's a real uh, interesting tool set as well uh, that can be made available to you um, if you are interested in, in examining the labor market, and, and we're certainly going to use it as uh, part of our attraction tool for, uh, for that um, aspect of our, of our city's growth. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we recently undertook uh, retail expansion and attraction, a retail market analysis, and, and we've been promoting it, and, and we are well into our imp implementation plan. Um, and in fact, um, I think you can still see this on some of your screens. Um, this probably best summarizes uh, what the retail demand told us. So uh, as you can see, we've got several sectors there, auto, clothing, supermarket, furniture, sporting, uh, hobby, and general merchandise. And that first column uh, currently shows, uh, or shows what the current demand is, and in fact, shortfall in square feet. So auto, it basically says that, uh, and we, we know this, that uh, a lot of St. Albert's do go shop outside of St. Albert to buy their vehicles, but um, St. Albert could actually support another 763,000 square feet of auto dealers here in St. Albert if everybody, everybody were to shop in St. Albert. Um, clothing, again, uh, 100,000 uh, square feet of additional uh, retail space uh, could be supported by uh, what St. Albertans do by way of shopping habits. And, and, and so it goes. I do want to point out general merchandise, it looks like, and it's in bracket, it, it says that we have a surplus. So what that actually means, and it doesn't mean that we have too much, it means that we have a lot of people from the region that are coming here to support and shop in St. Albert for general merchandise. So um, this, this certainly sets itself on an equilibrium basis, so that we would not have that situation if, in fact, it was not supportable by people that are coming from the north into St. Albert shop, and we know a lot of people from Westlock, Barhead, Athabasca, uh, do make trips into St. Albert, so this is uh, reflecting that. Uh, the future, you can see that column. So that's when we do grow out to be uh, in the 100,000 range, and you can see the huge opportunities we have by way of square feet uh, in each one of these sectors. And in fact, the survey that was done of the retail marketing and where, what the shopping habits were of St. Albertans um, is shown in that last column. So the number one um, citizen ranking of what they wanted to see here in St. Albert was clothing, more opportunities for buying um, men's and women's clothing, um, and so it went. So um, this survey was done before the Costco opened, so it was interesting. Timing is everything. Uh, I think we did this last June, and we were still just hinting that there was a store coming that you could buy, catch up by the case, um, and uh, since it's uh, now open, uh, it's changed uh, the landmark uh, quite a bit. Oh yeah, so this is a good one too. So this slide here um, is a traffic volumes, and I just wanted to show you, because these are the number of eyes that are on St. Albert, and that are going by uh, key aspects of our, of our future growth in our city uh, on a daily basis. So on St. Albert Trail, we have 56,000 vehicles a day going up St. Albert Trail. So that certainly explains, you know, the viability of that as a commercial corridor. Uh, Ray Gibbon Drive, 16,000 a day. So anybody that's looking at making investment along Ray Gibbon Drive, we already have 16,000 vehicles a day on it, and, and that's only going to continue with the gr to grow with the, uh, the development that's happening, uh, that will happen in St. Albert and is happening in the region immediately to our south and folks that are availing themselves of Ray Gibbon Drive. Campbell Road, almost 18,000. <clears> and Anthony Hendy, almost 40,000 a day. So, you know, Anthony Hendy, you just look at that one, that's 40,000 new eyes, you know, new pairs of eyes or vehicles that are going by St. Albert that didn't uh, know where St. Albert was or see how close it was or how well connected it was uh, until that uh, facility opened. So what are our marketing efforts and what are we doing to help you uh, with regards to uh, um, attracting more people and, and attention to St. Albert. Uh, so visitor services, uh, as we've indicated, um, or we pointed, is council uh, 
supported this, and the Chamber of Commerce and uh, Economic Development have come to an agreement uh, to support visitors that do come to St. Albert, so uh, uh, we can direct them uh, to, uh, to your business and to activities that we have in St. Albert. Uh, residential attraction, uh, we are going to be creating partnerships with the developers here in town, and, and the mayor indicated some of the home builders as well. Uh, we certainly uh, want to create that partnership and help market it. Uh, we have not been picking up our share of residential uh, development in St. Albert, and, and this will certainly uh, help that. And we do have a residential attraction campaign, um, and uh, we are, you're going to see that quite prevalent in the, uh, in the community over the course of the year. Uh, we have a botanical bus. Uh, botanical bus loop. I don't know if you've seen the bus. It's, it's shrink-wrapped. It's green. It's very botanical. It's actually been running uh, through St. Albert and into Edmonton. Uh, but during the summer months on Saturdays uh, for the farmer's market, uh, it does run from here in the Enjoy Center downtown to the farmer's market uh, and out to uh, the Botanic Park um, as a free commuter uh, service for, or not commuter, but just a transfer service for uh, people that want to uh, visit all of those venues. Uh, we are also going to be hosting a Did You Know tour uh, for developers and uh, real estate agents uh, this summer where we're actually going to have them on a bus and we're going to take them around St. Albert uh, to make sure that they all know what's going on in St. Albert. It's surprising. You know, um, you know our, our development and, and real estate partners um, know a lot, but I think nobody knows everything. So I think this is an opportunity to provide uh, that information to everyone so that they, again, can help uh, market St. Albert and, and totally understand uh, what it is that we're doing and you know the the value of uh, and you know where our education system ranks um, you know uh, we had one of our staff that was actually at a uh, one of the show homes this weekend and, and they are using that as one of their uh, marketing uh, um, tools and uh, we are certainly going to uh, build that in as well. Um, Dig In um, is, a, uh, is an event and I've got uh, some information on that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, symposiums, a commercial, a commercial cost share program um, I don't know if you're aware, but we do have this program in the city to help you um, spruce up your business a little bit. Um, there, you, you can get bike racks in front, of your, uh, in front of your business or some street furniture, or you can get a blade sign, a vertical sign that's on your building that advertises what your business is, or you can beautify it. And uh, this commercial cost share program will share um, the cost of those elements, 50% um, uh, up to $25,000 per element. So if you were to go for all four elements, uh, which would cost you probably, well, who knows what it would cost you, but we would potentially cost share with you up to $10,000 on, uh, on those elements, so $2,500 per element. So you may want to keep uh, uh, that in mind. So here is what our residential attraction uh, uh, branding looks like. And um, so I talked about the, uh, what we're doing for promotion. I told you uh, what we're doing on the Did You Know Tour, um, a tax calculator. So we've been working very hard, and this is something that uh, we'll be bringing to council, and, and uh, our goal is to get this on the website uh, in the next two or three months, a tax, tax calculator. Um, it's kind of the elephant in the room. Everybody you know, knows the, the tax uh, scenario, but what we want to show with this tax calculator, it'll allow people that come to our website uh, to take a look at uh, and compare taxes. But what it does do is it provides an opportunity to show what the value you do get for those taxes. So people will be able to check what mean, what is important to them and it will highlight the value that you get in St. Albert um, under those particular uh, values that, uh, that you value in a community. Um, and it's the facts and nothing but the facts. Um, dig in event. Uh, this is uh, a bit of a, uh, a tourism event but it's going to be unique and, and St. Albert will be hosting uh, the, the first one uh, this year and it's a horticulinary festival. Uh, so basically, and, and it will be hosted here at the Enjoy Center, and um, it's going to be in October, and it's basically going to be focused on, uh, on food, from the ground to your table. So uh, you'll see more about that, but um, we're very proud to be uh, the first uh, community to host this uh, in Alberta, and um, as the year goes on, you'll see more and more about this, so uh, we're bringing that to you. Um, as the mayor pointed out, uh, or as Patrick pointed out, we had an internet symposium on February 19th, and we'll talk too much about that. Um, again, uh, did you know that tour? I can't say that enough, because I really do think that that's got an important aspect to uh, helping us to market uh, St. Albert. Um, and we will also be uh, introducing a, um, a CEO program, uh, where we're going to interview some of the key CEOs in uh, St. Albert to uh, understand um, you know, why they do business here and how we can help them expand business here and how we can attract more business here. So uh, that is uh, also going to take place. We're very excited about this opportunity here. Um, this is a, it's going to be almost like a little dragon's den if I can just 
use it that way, where we're looking to create a young entrepreneur program. Um, and it's for uh, youth, uh, 15 and up, and it's going to be open to individual, individuals or teams um, who want to bring us an idea or want to create their own summer job, if you will. Uh, we're looking at uh, creating or looking for, for teams that would create for us uh, something that we could introduce into the downtown uh, that's got a bit of a tourism uh, bent to it. And um, I don't want to lead them down too much of a garden path on this, on this. And in fact, we will work with the youth and we will work with the schools in developing this program. Um, but there's going to be seed funding associated with it. So really, it's, you're going to create your own summer job and we're going to help you create your own summer job. So um, you know, watch for this uh, and we are going to be advertising and promoting this in a big way, but it's certainly geared at the youth and, and we have a number of youth here, uh, here this morning. Uh, so hopefully that we can uh, uh, you know, interest, you know, in, interest you and interest your friends in, in participating in this, and, and we'll have this in the community uh, uh, in the next uh, in the next month or so. Symposiums, you know, so it's it's we are here to help you, and and we want to bring um, opportunities for you to meet fellow businesses in Saint Albert as well as to uh, get to uh, get to know a little bit more about how you can. Uh, serve yourself better and your business better as well as St. Albertans. So, um, you know, here's the list of symposiums. Um, they are in your uh, handout that is uh, in front of you. Um, as you can see, we got to say hello to your best customer. I'm not going to read them out to you, but they're, they're, we're all very, uh, very focused on your business and they're here for, uh, for you and we hope you do take uh, uh, advantage of them. Uh, I do briefly want to talk about another exciting opportunity and, and initiative that we're undertaking here in St. Albert and, and we've taken the lead. Um, it's Capital Region Export Development Alliance and, and very similar to what Patrick pointed out around the Smart City Alliance, this is an alliance that uh, will promote export and uh, we have collaborated with and partnered with the City of Edmonton and Bon Accord, uh, so we have both ends of the spectrum, uh, to create this virtual alliance and in fact uh, with uh, the City of Edmonton and Bon Accord as partners we applied to uh, Municipal Affairs uh, for a collaboration grant. And uh, the provincial government, and, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kahn, that uh, is uh, providing an opportunity for collaborators uh, to, um, to move forward with initiatives. So uh, we were successful in obtaining a $100,000 grant, and we just received the information on uh, how we could apply it. Uh, so we will be creating uh, this alliance uh, over the course of the year, and uh, we're very much um, excited about that. Um, Sturgeon County, uh, you know, I think Mayor Flynn left but, I left, but I think we still have some uh, Sturgeon County folks here. You know, we'd very much like to see other partners join us. We've had uh, some other uh, communities in the region already uh, express interest, so we're hoping to build this alliance in a big way. But um, it will uh, provide information on export knowledge, export readiness. We're hoping this alliance will allow the smaller businesses that may have been a little bit intimidated on other export opportunities uh, to avail themselves of the services that this uh, virtual alliance might provide for them and to allow them to expand their markets. <clears throat> talked about the wayfinding pro project and uh, we've been talking about this for a couple of years. Uh, we went out to tender last year and were surprised at the cost associated with, uh, with uh, implementing this, uh, this program. Um, these will guide uh, visitors through St. Albert to a number of our activities. Uh, council, um, two, three weeks ago, fully funded this project so that we could get it in place this year. So we are moving quickly. Um, we are uh, going to get out to uh, the market in the next month or so and uh, work with the, uh, the suppliers to make sure that we can, uh, in fact, get this uh, in, uh, in St. Albert um, this fall. Light rail transit. Uh, there's not too many communities of our size that talk about light rail transit and mass transit. And uh, we, uh, we are doing that. And in fact, uh, Council again supported a, a study and, and we've initiated it, um, concept planning for it. So it's not the building of it, but it's the planning of it. And um, I, I can't understate the value of being able to mention this to investors when we are out in Toronto or in Vancouver or wherever we are, that uh, when we talk about St. Albert, sometimes they're not really listening to all the great things that we have going here and just because they're distracted and, you know, who's St. Albert? As soon as I mention that we've got, we're planning LRT, they go, back the bus up? What? No way. And then they want to hear the rest about us and it, it attracts them. It, it's, it's an incredible uh, marketing tool. So um, we will be engaging uh, stakeholders in the community. 
Uh, we've already had uh, one meeting and one of our uh, board members attended it on, on behalf of the business community to, to try to set the, uh, the tone for how we're gonna move forward in this planning. Um, so you will see more about that uh, over the next few months uh, coming out into the community. Um, it, LRT, it does a lot of good things and those are just a few of them, but you know, a labor market accessibility and mobility of people and, and uh, as I said, it's a great marketing tool. So, there is this map. So, so what, right? So what? We're growing. I'm hoping that I've left with you, you know, what this really does mean, you know, for you as by way of opportunities. I mean, we've got a significant population growth that's going to occur. We're going to work very hard at, at increasing our market share in the region, and we know all our development partners are very keen on doing that with us. So you're going to see significant marketing efforts in that regard. We think there's ample opportunities for existing and new investors in St. Albert once they know this story. And we've got tools that are ready for you to use, and you need to know that we, economic development and the departments in the city that are in support of growth, are here to help you capitalize on St. Albert's coming economic prosperity. So please, please, think for the future and call us at any time. And I, I do this, everybody in my office knows that. Call me, call me, call us. Anyway, thank you very much and um, yeah, thank you. So if I can call the panel members back up, we will now do some Q&A. Um, we've, we've closed right on an 8.30, so uh, we can take some quick questions here or go as long as you like. So I totally respect the fact that we said we'd be kind of done by now. So I think we have people in the audience with a microphone or two. If somebody wants to jump up, yep, Joan's at the back with the microphone. Any questions? Thank you very much for tweets, by the way. I mean, that was kind of entertaining. And nope, I see we've got a question at the back here. Hi, Linda Moffat with the Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Linda. I don't really have a question, which is probably, you're going, whew, <laughs> that's good. Um, but I do have a comment. And my comment is um, kudos to you and to all of the City of St. Albert staff, because this initiative that started just a couple of years ago with a much greater focus on economic development, uh, you can really feel within the city and within the businesses within the city that the momentum is growing and that there's an excitement here about uh, the future of St. Albert. So I just want to pass on certainly a comment that uh, you are making a difference and uh, we're really proud to be working with you. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, folks. Uh, feel free to network. And uh, as I said, next year will be our 10th anniversary, so maybe we'll have indoor fireworks next year. I'm not quite sure. But thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your day.